Earlier this month, Alaska Dispatch had an opportunity to fly over the Bering Sea between Nome and the Russian border. The aerial view of the ice below intrigued us. Stunningly unique with different shapes, textures and colors, we wanted to know more. Compliments of the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Colorado, here is what we learned about the science of sea ice. The Bering Sea is it's going to all be what we call first year ice, which is ice that formed since the last summer um, because it's in an area that during the summertime it warms up and, and it, breaks up, it breaks up all the ice and the ice, and Bering Sea is ice free during summer. That's the voice of Walt Meyer, a scientist with the Snow and Ice Data Center and a sea ice expert who explained young ice also means thin ice, something key to the patterns we saw on our flight. When it's very thin, it can, it will, what we call raft, where one, one piece of ice essentially kind of flows over on top of the other piece, and, uh, and you get this uh, banding structure. Those scotch tape looking bands are actually thicker layers of ice, where sections that have rafted over one another have fused. As the ice matures, growing thicker and harder, ice plates stop riding over one another and instead form piles of rubble called pressure ridges as they collide. That's basically a polar bear that's you know, right, kind of getting ready to walk over one of these ridges where you see these chunks of ice. Looking close, the ice sheet the bear is on also reveals clues about what the sea was like when it was formed. If the seas are calm, it will tend to form in kind of these big flat sheets, and that's kind of what you see the polar bear on. As those sheets break apart, chunks shear off and drift away, which can make useful rest stops for other marine life, like these walruses. It broke off from wherever it, it was and has drifted down, um, and then around it is where um, you see the, the that's new ice that's forming that kind of darkish gray um, color. Um, and so that's ice that's, that's quite thin and, and newly formed. The newest ice is the darkest ice, and in the lower corner of this image, the pattern it forms is known as finger rafting. When you take your hands and kind of push them over each other, with the, you know, in between the fingers, that's essentially what happens there, um, where you get these kind of long, um, thin pieces that kind of weave into each other, essentially. More than temperature, wind and water currents tend to dictate ice formation in the Bering Sea. It's a dynamic environment, one that's constantly in motion and which can produce the unexpected. This one's interesting. Mir theorizes this fan-like creation is the result of tidal movement, which allowed very thin ice to raft up in opposite directions. It's a lot of little subtle motions back and forth and the ice just kind of just keeps building up slowly um, and fanning out, um, but it keeps moving back in a little bit each time. This year, Meyer says his center's data shows the Bering Sea has created more ice than usual, but it's not nearly enough to affect the Arctic's overall melting trend.